Welcome to No Rubbish Travels. Here you will find comprehensive itineraries with no bullshit or drama. If you are a mountain person and planning to visit Switzerland for its dramatic valleys and magnificent alpine region, this is the perfect itinerary for you. In this video, I'll take you through a day-by-day -day itinerary from the shores from turquoise lakes to alpine villages all the way to the top of the tallest mountains. So let's dive in. After landing in Zurich or Geneva, directly from the airport, we'll catch a scenic train to Interlaken. The train ride is a perfect introduction to Switzerland's breathtaking landscapes with lakes, mountains and quaint villages along the way. If you have some extra time to stay in Zurich, consider visiting the old town, the shopping street or take a boat trip to the Lake Zurich. Interlaken Interlaken is a charming town nestled between Lake Thun and Lake Brienz. Try finding an accommodation near the Interlaken Post Station. From here, it's easy to get business in any direction. Spend your first day by taking a trip to Isselwald, a picturesque off-beach village on the shores of Lake Brienz. Take a boat ride or a 20-minute bus to Isselwald. The bus ride is free with your card which you get from your Interlaken accommodation. Sit on the left side of the bus to enjoy the views of Lake Brienz. Right next to the bus stop, you'll find this amazing pier. A scene from a very famous Korean show, Crash Landing on You, was shot here. Hence, this pier is very popular. Next, we'll walk along the lake shore towards the bay area. And soon enough, you'll stumble upon this beautiful castle. It has a perfect backdrop of snow-covered mountains and a beautiful turquoise lake. From here, you can keep walking on the shore or climb up into a village and see this beautiful scenery where the village sits with the backdrop of the lake and mountains. Head back to Interlaken and admire the charming town. Walk along the river Are. Have a Swiss dinner and call it a day. Or you can take a funicular up to the mountain to a place called Harder Kum. It offers the panoramic views of the city into Laken, nestled between the two lakes. Next morning, we'll take a short train ride to Lauterbrunnen. A valley known for its dramatic cliffs and 72 waterfalls. This will be our base for the next three days. When you arrive at the Lotterburn station, just walk up for 200 meters and you will be stunned with this amazing view of the town. Right next to these rocky spheres, there is a path leading downwards, which will take you to this amazing viewpoint. From here, continue walking towards the big waterfall, which is called Staubach Waterfall. When you reach the waterfall, you'll find this small cute water fountain from which you can absolutely drink the water as it's from the waterfall itself. On the left side of the waterfall, there is this beautiful hiking route. It is mostly flat and can be done by people of any age and fitness. 
but it offers some of the most stunning views I have seen in Switzerland. On your way, you will find various fields of grass and farm fridges, which are a good option to buy some local trees, milk or chocolates. On your way, keep an eye on the mountains and try to find waterfalls. We were able to count at least 10. From Starback Fall, if you keep walking for about 50 minutes, you should reach this huge grass field and witness some Swiss cows just chilling and grazing grass. I love this scenery where you see the cows grazing on the field with the backdrop of the Jungfrau mountain range. You can continue further on this trail or head back to the town for some Swiss dinner and rest. And next day, we'll take a train from the Lauterbrunnen station and head up for the Jungfrau York, which is the highest station in Europe and marketed as the top of Europe. On this route, the train stops at Wengen and Kleinschneidig. Try to sit on the right side of this train because as you can see, the views from here are amazing. At Kleinschneidig, you'll need to change the train for Jungfrog. Use this time to admire the massive three mountains, the Jungfrog, Monk and the Eiger. Grab a snack on the Kleinschneidig restaurant before you head up to the top of Europe. Once you are at the top, there are plenty of things that you can do there. The top of Europe itself is like a whole experience where you go from one experience to the next. Like a 360 cinematic experience, a lot of museum like places where you can read and hear about the history of this place. There are ice sculptures within the glacier tunnels and lastly you can go up to the Sphinx Observatory and watch the glaciers from there or you can even head out to the glacier and do a little bit of hiking there. Unfortunately when I was there the weather was really bad as you can see it was minus 15 degrees celsius blizzards and everything so we could not enjoy the outdoors a lot. But hopefully the luck favors you and you can enjoy the views from the top of Europe. A very good alternate option when you are heading down from the Jungfrau York. You can stop at Wengen and hike all the way down to Lauterbrunnen from there. I've heard that the hike is amazing if the weather is good. Unfortunately for me, the weather was not. So I headed down to Lauterbrunnen, enjoy a very nice evening walk. And I must admit, after all that snow and icy blizzard at the top of Europe, coming back to these lush green grasslands of Dr. Vernon with the waterfalls view was really calming. Next morning, we'll hop on our train again and head to Grindelwald. This journey will take about an hour from Dr. Brunnen and you'll need to change the train once. In Grindelwald, there are many options to spend a day. The most popular one is going up to Grindelwald first and have adventure activities there. The second option is going to Mandligen, which is another peak and it offers great views of the three mountains, Eiger, Monk and Jungfrau. The weather was a bit cloudy and there was snow up in the mountains, so I decided to do the less touristy thing of hiking by myself. I chose this hike which goes up from the train station of Grindelwald to Cafe 3692. You can just put that on the Google map and start walking. This turned out to be one of the greatest decisions of my trip because the route up there was amazing. There was pretty much no one else other than us and you can see there was just this cat which accompanied us for some while. And you can find farm animals, sheep, these cute alpacas. Overall the hike took us about 4 hours for going up and coming down, which included a short break on the Cafe 3692 for some coffee and pastries. The view 
throughout the journey was amazing. We passed through many cute chalets, grazing fields, small farms, so overall a 10 on 10 experience. After spending a nice day in Grindelwald, you can stay here for another day or head back to Dr. Brunel. Next morning, we'll leave the Jungfrog region and head to Zermatt. This is a long journey of 3 hours and you'll need to change your train twice, first in Spies, then in Wisp. Zermatt is a small vehicle-free town in the south of Switzerland. It offers photogenic views of the world's most photographed mountain, the Matterhorn. The first thing you can do in Zermatt is hike up to this point called Rovini Point. This offers great view of the Zermatt town with the backdrop of the Matterhorn mountain. On a clear evening, the mountain should look something like this. The highlight of the Zermatt trip is the ride up to the Gornergrath. The Gornergrath Railway takes you up to 3089 meters high to the Gornergrath station. On your way up there, sit on the right side of the train and throughout the journey you'll get unparalleled views of Matterhorn and its neighboring mountains. Some of them are even higher than the Matterhorn itself. If you come here in summer, you can first get down at the Rotenboden station which is the second last station on this train route and hike down for 10 minutes to a lake called Riffelsee Lake which offers a mirror view of the Matterhorn mountain on the lake's water surface. Unfortunately in winter, the lake is mostly frozen. Once you are at the top of Corner Growth, on one side, you can see the Matterhorn and the neighboring peaks. And on the other side, if you hike up for 10 minutes, you can see the massive Gornograd Glacier. You will also find Zoom, the Matterhorn experience up there, which has free entry and opens from 9.45 a.m. to 4 p.m. Inside Zoom, you can experience a 3D cinema offering views of Matterhorn in all the seasons. There is a periscope with which you can watch the Matterhorn and the neighboring peaks up close. There is also a really fun virtual reality paragliding experience. After spending a nice day in Gornagroth, you can stay for another day in Zermatt and visit the Glacial Paradise. I chose not to do that because I thought that the experience in Glacial Paradise was very similar to the top of Europe in Jungfrau. After Zermatt, you can take a train and head back to Zurich or Geneva for your flights. On my way back to Geneva, I stopped at this beautiful town on Lake Geneva called Morges. The town holds an annual tulip festival in the spring, which is worth a visit. There you have it, a comprehensive itinerary for Swiss Alps. Hope you like this no drama and no rubbish travel itinerary. Please subscribe to this channel as I will be posting many more videos from my next travel plans in Europe and Asia. Thank you for watching.